Well, hi there, boys and girls. We're going to take a look at some more related rates questions, so let's just get after this. I've got this fish being reeled in. There's a bridge 16 feet above the water. I went ahead and drew a little triangle here. And the bridge is 16 feet above the water. So let's get my pin out and label that as 16. And we want to find out at what rate is the angle between the line and the water changing. So I'm going to put a little theta here as the angle between the line and the water. And that tells me, that's my question, that's my what I want to know. I want to know the rate of the change of the angle. So d theta dt equals what? On top of that, I know the fish is being reeled in at a rate of 2 feet per second. That means that dx dt, where x is right here, dx dt is negative 2. It's being reeled in. The x coordinate is decreasing. And uh, we want to find out when, how that angle is changing when the water, I'm sorry, when the line is 20 feet, when we have 20 feet of line out. That was hard for me to say. I don't know why. So eventually that's going to be 20, but I'm not going to freeze my picture yet. So we have to ask ourselves, self, what's the relationship between theta and 16 and x here? And here is an example of a trig function. That relationship is the tangent function. Tangent of the angle theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And on top of that, I'm going to write that as 16x to the negative 1. You, if you've taken derivatives with the x down here, you know why I just did that. So what we're going to do next is take our derivative with respect to time of both sides. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of theta times d theta dt because of the chain rule is equal to negative 16x to the negative 2 times dx dt. Now at this point I get to freeze my picture. So let's come back up here and grab a shape and freeze our picture grab that little triangle here. Alright, let's freeze our picture whenever there are 20 feet of line out. So that means I'm going to put a 20 right here. Go back up to my marker here, my pen. There's 20 there. This x is, well, I'll figure it out in just a minute. This is still 16. And that is a basic 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So this is going to work out to be a 12. If you don't believe me, you could do the Pythagorean theorem. So my angle is right here, theta. And let's take a look at our derivative. I'm going to clean this up and solve it for d theta dt. d theta dt is going to equal negative 16 over x squared. My pen keeps going away here. Over x squared times dx dt. Now, if I want to divide both sides by secant squared, that's the same thing as multiplying by cosine squared. So this is going to be my answer. d theta dt is going to be equal to all of this. Now my x is given to me as 12, so I think I'm going to go erase this x and go ahead and put in a little 12. Let me get the little baby eraser. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put in my 12 here. And my dx dt, I'm going to erase that and make that a negative 2. Little baby eraser. I could have got, I guess, the big brother eraser there back to my pen. So this is negative 2. Now let's figure out what the cosine of theta is. The cosine of theta is going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse which is 12 over 20. Before we square that bad boy, let's simplify it. 12 over 20 if we divide by 4 is 3 fifths. And if you square that you get 9 20 fifths. So that's my cosine squared of theta. So I'm going to get my little baby eraser out. Let's get little, little brother or big brother or big sister eraser out to fix that. Get back to my pen. And so we're going to replace the uh, cosine squared with 9 20 fifths. Alright, now it just so happens you can check on your calculator that 16 times 9 happens to be 144. That takes care of that 12 squared. I've got my two negatives and I get my answer of 2 20 fifths radians per second. My answer. All right. All right, so let's, I want you to change this next example here to read away from away from a light pole. Let's take a look at this example. So I've got a guy that's 6 feet tall and the light pole is 16 feet tall and he's walking away. I've got the tip of a shadow here and here's his little feet. There's his little feet. So there's the guy and there's his head. And there's his arms.
Okay, anyway, so he's walking away, and I'm going to label some things here. A lot of things are changing. Um, he's changing, his distance here is changing because he's walking away, and of course the shadow, this is the shadow's length here, but the first question is asking about the tip of the shadow in relation to this. How is that changing? So let's go ahead and call that x. So this first question, we want to find out what does dx dt equal in this picture down here. And I see a triangle inside another triangle, and so this is going to be um, similar triangles. So I want to call the guys walking away from this light pole, and so he's, he has a, a rate of change of 5 feet per second. So I'm going to call this value right here y. And then, of course, this last value over here will be x minus y. So let's set up similar triangles. It is true that 16 over x must equal 6 over x minus y. And so we can cross multiply and we can get that 16x minus 16y equals 6x. So I'm going to move this over here, move this over here, do some algebra. Yay! So 10x is equal to 16y and so I can divide both sides by 10 and I can get that x equals 16 over 10 which I think reduces to 8 fifths y. Alright, so what I want to do now is I want to take the derivative of both sides. So the derivative of x is dx dt, which is what I'm looking for, is equal to 8 fifths times dy dt. Now dy dt is how fast he's moving away from this pole, which I believe is given to me as 5. So if we substitute this 5 in here, I think we're going to get 8 feet per second. Alright, um, so that's the answer to that one. Now this next question is different. This, it, this is asking for at what rate is the length of his shadow moving. So I would really want to know what is x minus y, what's the derivative of x minus y. So I, I guess I could use the same picture and the same relationship, but this question would be what's the derivative of x minus y. And I'm going to, I'm going to redraw this picture because I don't want to find the derivative of x minus y. I want to relabel this as like just a y. So this is going to be a new picture for b. So we're going to erase all of this with a big granddaddy eraser. This is still away from. This next part is different because it's asking for the, how is the length of the shadow moving. So we want to find out how this length is changing, the whole length, not just the tip. And so I'm going to call, um, well, this guy, not the guy, but the light is 16, and this is still 6. And so I'm going to call this distance right here I'm looking for x now and I'm going to call this y and then this whole distance here is x plus y. And so setting up our similar triangles I will get that 16 over x plus y equals 6 over x and when we cross multiply we get that 16x equals 6x plus 6y so 10x equals 6y so x equals 3 fifths y by dividing both sides by 10. So now we can do our derivative again. So dx dt is equal to 3 fifths times dy dt. And again, dy dt is given to me in the problem as he's walking away at 5 feet per second. That's this y prime. So dx dt, now my x is the length of the shadow, is equal to 3 fifths times 5, which works out to be 3. Hmm. So it's 3 feet per second. Alright, so let's do one last example here. I've got a trough is 10 feet long and 6 feet across at the top. It ends, its ends are a isosceles triangle with an altitude of 4 feet. It's, if water is being pumped into the trough at 9 cubic feet per second, how fast is the water level rising when the water is 2 feet deep? So we are looking for dh dt water levels height alright just like in yesterday's notes when we talked about the relationship between the radius and the height of a cone the same thing is going to be true here the, the 
the base of this triangle is, is 6 and the height is 4, but that ratio will always be 6 to 4. So I'm going to say that the base of the triangle to the height is always 6 to 4. Now we want to find out this, uh, the water is being pumped into. That means that's given to me as dv dt. Our volume is changing. We're, we're gaining 9 cubic feet per second. So let's see if we can come up with the formula for the volume of this prism. Now this prism is, has a, a triangular base, so the volume is going to be the area of this base, which is base times height divided by 2. That's the area of this triangle. And then times 10. 10 would just be, it's not changing, so the, the length of this prism is 10. We can clean that up to be 5 times base times height. But what I can do now is I can use this right here to solve for one of these. And I'd like to solve this for B equals. So I'm going to get that B equals, of course, 6 fourths is 3 halves. B equals 3 halves H. So I'm going to have that my V is 5 times 3 halves H times H, which is 15 halves H squared. That's my volume equation in terms of the height. So my derivative, dv dt, will be 15h times h prime, or dh dt. And dh dt, I believe, is what we're looking for. And dv dt is given to me as 9, so I can replace that with 9. So 9 equals 15 times the height, which was 2, times dh dt. So we are going to get 9 over 30, which dividing by 3 would be 3 tenths. That's going to be how the height is changing. 3 tenths, let's put some units on that thing, feet per second. All right, so we're going to practice this again tomorrow, and I will see you guys then.